we are obsessed with pizza. And every city in America has its favorites. Thin, deep, wood-fired. So many options. That's a long story. How do you separate the pros from the imposters? It's not a simple answer. That's where I come in. Optimal bite ratio. Journalist, author, pizza podcaster, and tour company founder. I've made it my mission to find the nation's best pizzas, sometimes in the most unlikely places. You are about to witness the very exciting story of a city and its pizza. 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 It is a story of a city seeking new horizons in a resolute contest with great challenges. Pepperoni is underneath the cheese. So it lays right on the dough. And then it's sauced over the cheese. That city is Detroit. On this episode, we're in the Motor City to learn how a deep rectangular pan gave local society the inspiration to create a completely unique pizza. Hey, Chicago's not the only city with a deep dish pie. You know, Detroit is known as the home of Motown. You could also call it Dough Town for all the pizza companies that have started here. Domino's, Little Caesars, Jets. And there's no denying Detroit-style pizza has been sweeping the nation. Emmy Squared in New York City, Union Squared Chicago, Square Pie Guys in San Francisco, hell, even Pizza Hut has a Detroit-style pizza on their menu. And what is Detroit-style pizza? It is, at its core, a Sicilian pizza baked in a pan with a spongy, soft focaccia-like interior, a crispy edge and undercarriage, highlighted by that crunchy, cheesy frico around the perimeter. And it all started here at Buddy's Rendezvous Bar in Hamtramck, just north of downtown Detroit, in 1946 by a guy named Gus Guerra, who got the recipe from his mother-in-law. Crucifisa Pasalacqua. Marie Guerra Easterby is Gus Guerra's daughter. My mom's uncles own the building called Buddy's, and dad bought into it in 1944 for about $2,300. And it was a bar. Grandma decided that with three partners in there, you can't make enough money on beer and whiskey. So she asked him to add some food. So they discussed it and decided that she would teach him her Sicilian pizza recipe. She bought some square pans at these hardware stores and she was baking them in these square pans. My dad thought that might be a good idea to make the pizzas on. Detroit style pizza, obviously it's square, so that's the first step. It, it, it's a square shape and it's baked in an industrial pan that was sourced with a lot of tool and die shops that were here. When I started here in 1974, 75, it was brick cheese. You get 40 pound blocks, you grind them, a little bit bigger than a pebble, and then it's placed on the uh, pizza. The searing of the hot pan with that little bit of cheese that builds up around the edges. But traditionally, the crust should come off because if the cheese sits too close, it will fall over when the pie comes out. Everybody can get a rectangular pan and make a good pizza. It's gotta be the dough, it's gotta be the airiness, it's gotta be the crunch, it's gotta be the cheese going to all the corners. The pizza sauce, I think, really makes a pizza, too. Gus Guerra sold Buddies in 1953 because he wasn't getting along with his relatives, and he found a bar in East Detroit called the Cloverleaf. The area is now called East Point. First order of business, start making pizzas. He decided to put um, pepperoni in it. That was really the basic, just plain cheese or pepperoni. Brick cheese and a mozzarella cheese. Sell the way to the corners and then he'd sauce it on top. The thing I love about this Detroit style pizza is the contrast. You've got that crispy edge, that frico, but a very soft, pliable middle. Lots of little air pockets inside. A little cup and char pepperoni on the top. This is the old fashioned pepperoni versus the new school pepperoni. But I love that contrast of soft and crunchy. A little bit of sweetness too, balancing the acidity. There's not a ton of sauce on this, just as you saw little dribbles of sauce. Quite a bit of cheese, which makes it a rich slice, but not overpowering. The nice thing about this is that OBR, the optimal bite ratio, crust, cheese, sauce, topping in every bite. Another part of the story involves a bar called Shields, which has been around since the 1930s. Well, they never served any food back in the day until the 1950s when they hired a chef by the name of Louis Tortois, who had worked in the kitchen at Buddy's. So guess what he started adding to the kitchen at Shields? Pizza, of course, just like he learned to make while at Buddy's. After Shields, Tortois opened his namesake, Louis, 
which occupies a retro space in Hazel Park the size of a bowling alley. His grandson, Nicholas, now runs the show. Louis was my grandfather, Louis Tertois. Most people believe he would be the pizza king of Detroit. My grandpa worked alongside him, all of them. Okay. My grandpa worked hand in hand with Gus Jr.'s father. The thing I like about Louis is, first of all, the sauce. Big difference here. It's a thin sauce when it's applied, but as it bakes in those hot blodget ovens, it reduces and concentrates. They also put plenty of sauce on this pizza. A lot of the places in Detroit are just doing a little dab or a little dollop or a little one stripe or two stripes. They actually cover the pie here. Um, also, the crust is fantastic. Ratio is great. OBR in effect. That's optimal bite ratio. And uh, a delicious pizza. In 1978, brothers Eugene and John Jett got in on the action. They opened their first store here in Sterling Heights, Michigan calling it Jet's Party Shop and Pizzeria. They got rid of the party shop, and now the pizzeria is in 19 states. In the mid-90s, Sean Rondazzo and his mom were operating a cloverleaf carryout here in a mall in St. Clair Shores. Uh, Sean had been tweaking the recipe for a number of years, and in 2012, ended up going to Las Vegas to compete at the Pizza Expo. He ended up winning world champion pizza maker that year, and everything changed because they bought out the franchise, they created a new company called Detroit Style Pizza Company with a distribution center. They would sell pans and frozen pizzas and dough mixes. And things were rolling along for a number of years until the end of 2020. Sean had been battling brain cancer, dying at the age of 44. Well, his wife Carrie and his mom continue running the business, carrying on his legacy. Detroit style pizza is a rectangle pizza. You shake a little bit of oregano on the dough and then our cheese. Our cheese is caramelized all the way to the edge of the crust and then we sauce it on top when it comes out. It's a deep dish, nice and airy in the middle, nice crunch on the bottom, crispy edges all around. Okay, so the thing about this style of pizza, again, I love the contrast, but the one here, Detroit Style Pizza Company, I love that oregano on the bottom, which goes first on the dough. And then you've got the, uh, the pepperoni and then the cheese on top of it. Kind of hard to find it underneath typically. You're typically used to seeing the pepperoni on top of the pizza. Um, this has got the mushrooms, onions, and just a little bit of that sauce. I love the fact that the sauce goes on hot, cooked already. You get some of that contrast, but the hot temperature, the hot sauce with the hot pizza underneath, and that crispy frico edge, the ratio is just spot on. One of the great things about this dough is the high hydration. That's the water by volume. It's about 70 to 75% hydration in this dough. Very much like a focaccia. Underneath it's crispy, on the sides it's crispy. In the middle it's chewy. It's a little bit of sweetness also from that sauce on top, but it's cooked sauce. So pepperoni between the dough and the cheese, or on top of the cheese, smattering of sauce, or full red top. 100% brick cheese or a blend. For as many Detroit style pizzas as there are in the Motor City, no two are the same. Something to think about next time you order one. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm Steve Delinsky. We'll see you next time.